Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'amalina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiyala wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu arsalahu bil haqqi bashiran wa nadhira wa da'iyan ila Allah bi idnihi wa sirajan munira amma ba'du faqad qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fil qur'an al majid a'udhu billahi min ash shaitanir rajim ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum wa akhshaw yawman la tajzi walidan an waladihi wa la mauludun huwa jazin an walidihi an walidihi shay'a inna wa'dallahi haqq kun fala taghurannakumul hayatud dunya wala yaghurannakum billahil gharur alhamdulillah we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity of coming to the masjid to perform our juma salah and i think it is very important for those who want to come to a masjid to be able to come to remi- remind themselves and to be guided by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what is being said not by the people who are on the members they can't guide anybody but what they are saying are the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not their own interpretation but the interpretation of the big scholars of islam imam bukhari imam abu hanifa hafiz ibn kathir but it is important because those people who will stand on the member and cut and paste what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent from the quran what the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us from the sunnah and interpret that or present that in a means by which we can learn something and it's so important because we are living in a time and we are going through a phase of this the history of this world where many people are feeling a sense of hopelessness not finding any light at the end of the tunnel we heard about covid-19 then we heard about alpha beta delta now mu when will it end how will it end will we survive it all the economics of it the physical health of it the time that it is taking especially young people who believe that they are losing so much because schools are closed educational opportunities are limited jobs are difficult to come by there can be that sense of desperation hopelessness confusion it's just coincidental that today is the international day for the, suic- the prevention of suicide the international day for the prevention of suicide september the 10th i'm actually right now involved in a course of for clinicians involved in suicide prevention an online course is going on right now as i'm speaking there's 63000 of us doing the course simultaneously around the world because it is an important thing every year over 700000 people commit suicide we look at the statistics for coronavirus for murders and so on Suicide is the fourth leading cause of death of 15 to 19 year olds throughout the world. 
And Muslims are not excluded from committing suicide as well. Because the same triggers and factors that causes somebody to think about taking his own life as a human being, these same triggers are there for Muslims as well. Triggers like drug abuse, use of alcohol or use of Ill illegal drugs, triggers like mental disease, bipolar disease, depression, triggers like stress, traumatic stress that a lot of people are feeling because of what's going on in the world. But we hope that for the believer, he or she will never turn towards suicide because of all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pre presents for us in the Holy Quran. Both from the point of view of how destructive for a person's eternity is the committing of suicide. How destructive that is. That he is not ending his problems by committing suicide. He is starting a whole new set of problems. But of course, a person in that realm who's thinking like that is not thinking about all of those consequences. But the Quran and the Sunnah also offer hope. But the reason why I am saying it is so important for us to be able to interpret or to give the interpretation of what the Quran and the Sunnah present for us as believers is because sometimes we can read a verse of the Quran and it confuses us if we do not understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us about. Sometimes we may even think there are contradictory texts in the Quran and the Sunnah. Because, for example, with regard to the things that may cause a person to become so stressed out in the world that he wants to take his life, that maybe he invested all of his money in the stock exchange and it failed, it lost everything. Maybe there was a fire and his house burned down. Maybe he had a relationship that was the love of his life and that relationship fell apart. And he or she feels that there is no value for continuing to live. Life is now worthless. That sense of feeling that nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. Your parents, they do not love you. They are just providing for you, but they do not have any emotional attachment for you. That feeling that if you killed yourself and committed suicide, nobody would even miss you. Or in fact, you would alleviate other people's problems by you taking your life. is something that perhaps runs through the minds of many people because the researchers have said that the biggest factor that causes a person to commit suicide is that he has tried it before. Is that he thought about it, he wanted to do it, he didn't get through the first time, but at some point in time, he does that. So it is important for us to really understand what does the Quran and the Sunnah tell us about this life and this world. Because most of the stresses that we go through in this world with regard to our physical situation, our material life, has to do with exactly that, this dunya what we have gained in it, what we have lost in it, how people feel, how we feel living in it. And indeed in this verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a very stark warning from chapter 31 verse 33. Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nas, ittaku rabbakum, O mankind, fear your Lord, waqshaw and be afraid of that day. وَقْشَوْ يَوْمًا لَا يَجَزِي وَالِدٌ عَنْ وَلَدِهِ Fear that day when no father will suffice for his son. 
as a very chilling statement, both from the father's point of view, that that child who you have nurtured and brought up and invested in, that you will have no say on that day about his final destiny. Or from the point of, from the, from the son's side, that that father for whom, upon whom I depended and who used to guide me and take care of me, he is no longer going to be there with me on that day. Allah says, fear that day when no father will suffice his son, nor will his son be sufficing his father in the least. Allah says, surely the promise of Allah is true. And then Allah says, so the worldly life must not deceive you. Don't let the worldly life وَلَا يَغُرَنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغُرُورِ Don't let the worldly life deceive you or don't you ever be deceived about Allah by the deceiver. Allah mentions the world first because this is the stress that we feel. The stress of I don't have a job. I can't get a wife. I don't have an education. The children's mouths are hungry. Their bellies are hungry. Their bellies are empty. They don't have food to eat. The debt collector is coming down on me. I can't pay the electricity bill. It's going to be taken away. I can't pay the wasa bill. Something is happening. Stress after stress after stress about the things of this world. And we become so confused sometimes, so frustrated sometimes, we want to kill ourselves or we want to leave Islam or we want to do something wrong. Like steal, join a gang, get involved in some kind of underhand activity. Allah says, do not let this world deceive you and do not be deceived by the deceiver. And Allah mentions the world first because this is actually the tool that the deceiver uses. This is what shaitan uses. Shaitan makes you feel, makes us feel. We are no good in this world. We are useless in this world. We have no value to anybody in this world. There is no love for us in this world. There is nothing for us left. And we want to leave this world and kill ourselves. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa also say, made statements about this world that would make you think that there is no value in it. In one hadith, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith found in Sahih Muslim, he says, Wallahi, by Allah, by Allah, ma dunya fil akhira, the the, the world compared to the next life, illa is nothing except mithlu, except the example, ma yaj'alu ahadukum. The example of one of you putting his hand, fi yammi, his finger into the yam, into the ocean. Fal yangdur, bima yarji'ah. So look, look at what comes out. For young look at what comes out, what returns up. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, this ocean, this is the hereafter. This little bit of water that comes out with the finger when you extract it from the ocean, this is this world. So this world is nothing compared to the hereafter. So why are we even living in this world? Why are we even working in this world? A person may feel there's nothing. There is nothing to gain. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brings another example. He says in a hadith, the food of man has been made as an, as an example of the uselessness of life. The food of man has been made an example of the worthlessness of life. 
For it does not matter how prepared and seasoned the food may be. Look at what becomes of it in the end. Hadith found in Ahmad. Look at what becomes of it in the end. So on the one hand, a person may think that this life really means nothing. Even if I leave this world and I destroy my life. There's no value in this world. Yet as a believer, the Jannah that we strive for, the hereafter that we are aiming to be happy in, depends on our actions in this world. In fact, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say in one of his du'as, Oh Allah, rectify my religion, that is the guardian of my affairs. وَأَصْلِحْ لِي دُنْيَايَ And rectify my dunya. Rectify my worldly life. أَلَّتِي فِيهَا مَعَاشِي Because in it, in it is my livelihood. Rectify this life because in it is my livelihood. Meaning make my livelihood easy for me. Make my attaining of those things that I need and I require to live in this world easy for me. So on the one hand, we are being told that this life is worthless. On the other hand, we are being shown to make dua for good of this world. The dua that we make when we go around the Kaaba, Rabbana atina fit dunya. First thing. First thing. Why would we be asking for that? Oh Allah, give us the good of this life and the good of the hereafter. It means that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa is also telling us that we should think about our life in this world in a positive way. And about what we earn in this world. When Hadith the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, If the final hour comes, while you have a plant or a plant shoot or a seedling in your hands, and you are able to plant it before the hour comes, then you should plant it. So a person may say, well, what sense does that make? Ma'adhallah, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense. I'm saying a person may say, if the end of the world is here, why am I planting a plant? Perhaps there is still enough time for you to reap something from that. So the attitude that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants us to have from these ahadith is that do not make your life worthless. But utilize all of the opportunities you have to be productive, to be positive, to do good. But it seems as though it's contradictory. And it seems as though this is why some people, especially young people, may feel there is no value for me in this life. There is nothing to live for in this world. This world is worthless, it is temporary, it is the chattels of deception. Why am I even worrying to build a career? Why am I even worrying to find a job? Why am I even worrying to get an education? One of the scholars, Ibn Rajab, he gives an explanation about this contradiction that could come up in somebody's mind. He said that realize that the condemnation of the worldly life that appears in the Quran and the Sunnah is not aimed at its time. It's not aimed at the day or the night, the fact that our lives are going every single day. The statistics tell us, for example, that every 40 seconds, somebody commits suicide somewhere in the world. So we've been here for 20 minutes, work that out, how many people have killed themselves in that time. Allah Ibn Rajab is saying, Rahimahullah, that the condemna condemnation Allah is giving about this life in the Quran and the Sunnah is not aimed at the time in this world, nor is it aimed at its place. 
the various mountains and trees and plants and villages and towns. Nor is it aimed at the blessings that Allah has endowed it with. Nor is it aimed at what grows from the land. Nor is it aimed at the animals that he spread forth and so on. All of these matters are favors of Allah upon his creation that benefit them. The condemnation, however, he says, is aimed exclusively at the actions of man that occur in the dunya. Because most of them bring about a bad outcome, a blameworthy outcome. In other words, Allah, in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not condemn this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns what you do with the world that he has put you in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns how you use the favors that he has granted to you. He doesn't condemn the favors. He doesn't condemn the world itself. So many times you may hear a scholar talking about wealth. Don't try to get wealthy. Wealth is a distraction. Subhanallah, wealth is not a distraction. Whatever wealth you can earn is good. If it is you earn it in a halal way and you spend it in a halal way. When this wealth becomes something that is condemned is when you take this wealth and you do haram things with it or you earn it in a haram way. Otherwise the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never said that the ummah should be poor. That all of us should be walking and, or riding bicycles. No, subhanallah. So don't be confused that a, a person trying to become wealthy, for example, is doing something against the Quran and the Sunnah. No. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's how we use the things that Allah has given to us in this world. A simple thing like social media. Sometimes we condemn social media ourselves. But there's a lot of good that can come out of social media. It depends on how you use it. We ask ourselves, if we go on Facebook, what do we look at? If we go on Twitter, what do we look at? If we go on TikTok, what are we looking at? It's not the item, it's how you use it. Our family, our education, our skills, our strength, our time. These are all favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with is how we use them that make them either good for us or bad for us. That is why one of the verses we always hear is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara kaifa darab Allahu, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he has brought a mathal, an example, kalimatan tayyibatan ka shajaratin tayyibatan. He's brought the example of a good word. A good word is like a good tree. That its roots, asluhat thabit, and its branches, faruha bisamai, that they raise up to the sky. They go up to the sky. Because if you have a good foundation, which is deen and Islam and iman, and you say a good word, it has so much benefit. And a good word sometimes is all that we need to do to prevent those around us who think that we do not love them from attempting to commit suicide, from going into depression, from seeing, being feeling a sense of hopelessness. I was thinking this morning about the SEA results and how many parents would have said to their children, you've done a good job. You did the best you could do. Allah has decided this for you. This is Allah's plan and we accept it. And how many would have said, you've brought shame to my family. You've failed us. All the money that I've spent on lessons and this is the best school you could pass for? Of course, they may just be words, but they will have serious consequences for that child's ability to achieve his or her aspirations in the future. 
Because this is what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that a good word is like a good tree. If it is, it has good roots and it's a good word, it will have branches that reach up to the sky. And it will bear fruits. In every season, by the permission of Allah. So do not be confused by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us about this life. Because Allah is reminding us about the temporariness of this life is so that the great deceiver shaitan does not make us forget our duties to Allah and utilizing the favors Allah gives to us to gain Allah's pleasure and the Jannah. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in the Quran, in chapter 39 verse 10, Kul ya ibadi, O my servants, alladhina amanu takul amanit aman, alladhina amanu, alladhina amanu taku rabbakum. O my servants who have believed, ittaku rabbakum. Then fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fulfill your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lilladheena ahsanu fi hadhihi dunya hasanatun. Allah says, and for those who do good in this world, there is good for them. If you take this world Allah has put you in, if you utilize the blessings Allah has given to you, you utilize the wealth, the education, the senses, the strength, the time, the status, the honor, whatever Allah has given to you, and you use it for good, Allah says, Allah says, هَذِهِ dunya in this world, hasanatun, they will be good for you in return. And Allah says as well, وَالْأَرْضُ لِلَّهِ وَاسِعَةٌ and the earth of Allah, it is wide and spacious. Meaning that if you find yourself in a place, if you find yourself in a situation, in a time, in a conundrum, in which you cannot utilize what Allah has blessed you with for doing good, then move on. Go somewhere. Find somewhere. Allah's earth is spacious. Allah's earth is wide. But do not lose the opportunity. Do not become despondent. Do not lose hope. Do not feel worthless. Do not feel unloved. Do not think about suicide. Do not think about doing harm to yourself. Move and find and look and seek the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certainly has blessed us in this world with goodness, and whatever good we do in this world, there will be goodness for us from those actions. Akulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li walakum wa lisaid al-muslimina min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-gafuru rahim.